Hi, my name is Leroy Herring. We invite you to another series on uh, Emmaus Road podcast. For the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about the subject of redemption. Some of it may be what you're familiar with hearing. Uh, some of it may not be. What we would invite you to do is to go along with us in the Word and follow the Word as we go through it and then pray and ask the Holy Spirit, is this coming from Him or is this coming from something else? A lot of what will be presented is probably not what you may have been accustomed to hearing. This is what we do at Emmaus Road uh, podcast. This is also what we do at notwithoutblood.com uh, website where we have uh, several hundred teachings on there. <clears throat> we challenge people that are just stuck in the rut of traditional religion. We come against religion in all forms and we want the true Word of God to be active in our life as witnessed to us by the Holy Spirit. I am trying to be sorrowful enough that He will have pity on me enough to do what I want Him to do, the forgiveness of my sins, not understanding, realizing, knowing, believing that what I'm begging him for has already been accomplished. And the problem with that is that this creates the possibility that God will not forgive us. In other words, if, if I offend my best friend and I go to him and I say, uh, Barry, please forgive me. Please, you know. I really didn't mean to do that. I am putting the forgiveness in front of somebody like, all right, now he can say yes or he can say no. He can either do it or not do it. I'm doing the same thing with God at the altar. I'm looking at him well, I've got to be resourceful. I've got to be remorseful enough. I've got to cry enough. I, I've got to really be heartfelt for him to forgive me like I am trying to get him to do something that he really doesn't want to do. That's not God. That's not the God that I know. That's not the nature of God. God has already forgiven, atone for all the sins of all of mankind before the foundation of the earth. What are we to do? We receive. We receive. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, for by grace through faith, you know, we receive what God has already done for us. Not trying to twist his arm, not trying to convince him that we are worthy enough or sorrowful enough to get him to do something. This, if, if we start out, and, and the reason I come against this, if we start out with that mindset, then when we do commit sins as we will, all the time. Uh, I obviously do not proclaim, teach, or possess sinless perfection. Uh, that is an oxymoron. Mankind cannot live in sinless perfection. Uh, again, we are a child of Adam. We still are mortals. We're not in, 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 we have not put on immortality. So, you know, it's, it's really just a fact. 
So we have to depend on God's grace. We have to depend on his atonement. But if I start out at the altar receiving my salvation in that manner, then all through my life when anything goes wrong, <clears throat> I'm going to have the mindset that I've got to sufficiently confess this before Christ to get him to forgive me again. And I cannot say this enough. Redemption was on the mind of God before the foundation of the earth. Redemption provided the atonement for all sins of all mankind before the foundation of the earth. Our problem, <coughs> excuse me, as the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 3.12, is unbelief. Christianity is either belief or unbelief. We have made it a sin issue when God has removed the sin issue from his creation before the foundation of the earth. That issue had been removed. The issue now is, do I believe and what do I believe about his redemption? If the body of Christ properly proclaim redemption, then you would not hear so many people say, well, I've done so many things so wrong, God could never forgive me. You know, you try to get people to come to church. And they look at you and say, you know, I'm such a heathen, God could never forgive me. Or people look at themselves and, and have been told, man, you, you, are just, you are just lost. When the message should be proclaiming from the pulpit that God has already forgiven you, it's not that he can't. It's not that he won't. Or it's not that your sins are so great that the blood of Jesus cannot cover it. It's not any of that. It's the fact that God has already atoned for anything anyone could ever think or do or act out. It doesn't matter. That atonement has been provided. We now have the challenge, do we believe that? Or do I believe that I have to be a part of my salvation? If, if I believe that I have to be a part and contribute to my salvation, then I am taking a pure salvation and mixing in impurity, now I come up with an impure salvation. Just like the old example of you've got a rotten apple and a barrel of apples, it's going to, what, do away with all the barrel. When we add our imperfection to God's perfect salvation, it becomes imperfect. It doesn't become perfect. It becomes imperfect. So as, as we close for today, think about and pray about God's redemption. When did it occur? Did it occur when I went to the altar? Did Jesus go to the cross when I went to the altar? Or had he already been to the cross. People have problems with past, present, and future sins. Well, when you go to the altar, he forgives all your past sins, but not your future sins. You, you got to do this and this to atone for them. 
Child of God, listen. Every sin man has ever committed has been a future sin from God's atonement. No matter when it occurred because God provided Jesus as the perfect sacrifice on the cross before the foundation of the universe, of the world. So all sins were future. So don't come up with the idea that, well, he forgave my past sin, but he can't forgive future sin. He forgave future sins when he went to the cross before the foundation of the earth. We'll continue this study next week. We hope you continue to join us uh, on Emmaus Road podcast, and we hope you will visit our website, notwithoutblood.com, for future, uh, for past uh, in-depth teaching on a variety of subjects. Thank you very much.